right, well, welcome to the Soils class. My name is Don Rainey. I'm a, I work for the University of Florida IFAS Extension. Been in Extension uh, for about 19 years now. I started out as a county agent in Sarasota County. And uh, now I'm a regional specialized agent in water resources. And I generally work with uh, professionals that are using either fertilizers or chemicals or actually irrigation water and, uh, as a profession. And I try to teach them how to use it appropriately and properly out in the field. So it protects our drinking water and uh, keeps us going too. And I'm going to do some introductions over here. I'll turn it over to Sure. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is Golmeyer Golmohammadi. I'm a professor, assistant professor here at Range Cattle Research and Education Center. Uh, my program, our research is focused on hydrology, water basically water quality and quantity. And we do a lot of like water quality, quality research about groundwater, surface water. Since I moved here, I used to do hydrology for many years, like about like uh, 15 years to 20 years. But when I moved here to Florida, I focused on hydrology of grazing lands. <clears throat> like because I, I do live in Florida and this is like part of my job like to address the issues here. So um, we are using in our research different type of um, tools and techniques like modeling, AI. We are not only limited, limited to surface river or like groundwater, we do the irrigation management optimization. I would love to hear from you guys and like if you like feel free to reach and uh, discuss any issue that you, can, you think you can share with us. So I'm going to uh, introduce my, now it's going to be Max, my um, researcher, and then my two PhD students are going to introduce themselves to you. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Max Elna. I'm originally from Ghana, and <coughs> I grew up in the field. It means I love to get my hands dirty, and I have a great passion for agriculture. That passion led me to Costa Rica, where I pursue my undergrad in agricultural science, and I am here in the watershed and hydrology program under the supervision of Dr. Kolma, with the hope of becoming a soil and water specialist one day. So nice to meet you all, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Hello, how are you? My name is Sayed. You can see my pooling over there, just we moved the doctor. And I'm a PhD student. Yeah. I'm a PhD student under Dr. Gorman's supervision. So I'm doing what she has said. I don't want to say everything again. So nice to meet you. I'm so happy to have you again. <laughs> oh, hello. I'm a new PhD student of Dr. Goldman. Uh, my research would be about uh, water quality assessment. Assessment, assistance is another thing. <laughs> Water quality as assessment uh, using different software and uh, incorporating AI techniques. <coughs> okay, well, we'll get started. I'm going to briefly show you a PowerPoint of what to expect over here. We've got a couple of hands on um, projects that we'll do and, and learning about soil, soil texture. And to start with, we got to get our fingers right. So let's grab your sleeve, fill it. What do you? What does it feel? Describe it. Soft. Smooth. Slick. Smooth. Okay. Rough All right. You got what? I said rough, but not like uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's describe the carpet. What does it feel like? Rigid. Okay. So it's more coarse, right? It's coarse. Well, used to, you know, we'll still do, uh, farmers out in the field determine or check their, their soil texture, it's by hand. It's by hand. They would grab a ball, wet it a little bit, roll it around, and then start to squeeze it. And as they squeeze it, they could try to push out what we call a ribbon. And it especially looks like your dog's tongue or something. It just starts to come out. And then the more clay in it, the longer that ribbon would be. And so we could take and, and determine texture just by off the filling. So, Farmers are great at that. We're not so much, so to speak. We're still inside. So we can use other ways. This is another method of evaluating texture. And we're going to use the triangle today. 
Um, so, how do you? What, what's important to know about soil texture? What would you think the? Uh, you got to know what the soil is like, so you know what you can, like what you can have from that. Okay, so the, the plant uh, selection is critical. Water retention. Water retention, do you know? Does it need irrigation or not? And it goes back to you know what plant are you using? What's the soil? Is it matched up? If not, you got to add some some water to it. Um, so yeah, and then we have components too, and, and they're all natural. We have the sand, silt, and clay, and organic too matters. The organics is part of that what I call the mayo or the frosting between the cake layers. It holds all the three components together, and it helps bind and, and create <coughs> passageways for either insects or, or air itself or water uh, too. But we're going to concentrate on the per percentages of sand, silt, and clay today, and it's going to help us determine, again, how soil interacts as far as water, air, and nutrient movement. And uh, so the bottom line is, what, you, what we need to come away with is, is that soil texture is going to help to dictate what plant will be selected, and also how will it maximize crop yields. We definitely want to look at that to ensure that what we're planting is worth the cost. And uh, so just to get into the sandy uh, behavior characteristics real quick, you might see this again. Sandy soils regarding water, would you say it retains or mm -hmm. drains quickly? Drains. Mm -hmm. It's definitely going to drain quickly. So we have a low water retention capacity. So we're going to have to irrigate that more. So again, knowing what that soil texture <coughs> is composed of is important regarding irrigation use. Silt soils, they're going to have a smoother texture. Uh, not as much as clay and, and much more than sand and they're going to have that ability to retain moisture a little bit more than typically sand not as much as clay. Clay is an incredibly fine particle and uh, it's sticky when wet, plastic so you can determine definitely your soils by, by uh, again fill uh, if you do have heavy clay soils. They are prone to water logging so they're going to retain much more water than, than the other two components. So we're going to take the jar today, and you'll see this in just a second. And so we're relying on gravity to help us today. And how would gravity help us when we put a sample of soil in here, shake it up? What's going on? How does it settle out? Heaviest goes first. Heaviest goes first. That's right. So what do you, what's your, what do you think the heaviest component is? Sand. 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 So we're going to get fallout with sand first. And then we don't have two hours, but we do get some silt uh, to fall out. The clay is definitely going to be there all day. It'll be 24 hours. This is uh, kind of the end product we'll be looking at. We're going to look and, and determine the, the uh, percentages based on the colorations, the layers, the stratification here. This milky is the, the clay particles. They, they just haven't settled down yet. So we'll have to take a guesstimation on that maybe. Um, and we'll use this triangle to do that. And uh, what we're looking for, uh, these qu the lines will intersect each other. So clay lines, this is your clay. So if you have 50% clay, it's going to run all the way laterally, horizontal across. So you would, you would keep that line. If you had, say, a 20% a silt, it's going to run down this way. So you can see where it would cross the clay here. And if you had a 30% um, sand, it's going to run this way. And uh, I've got a little cheat code to let you know which way. But if it zeroed out there, or say it zeroed out here, it would be a clay up here, a clay type texture. But if it was in here, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for loam texture soils because they, pro they provide the most balance uh, in soil characteristics that we desire for plant growth. And uh, so let's do that. Let's. Uh, Divide up in groups, small group. We'll, we'll take four or five of you here. Second row. Is anyone in second row? Goes here in the back. We'll go over here to this table. And it looks like I might see you from the back. See from the back, come up to uh, the middle table. How are you? Yeah, you two right here, you, you can go on the other side. Yeah. All right. Three over there. 
So we are, we are going to have a practical form of what we have explained here, right? So we are having to bless the container. I will love each other to grab one. So we are going to fill these containers with two different types of soil and then try to do something similar to the diagram that we saw. Yeah, yeah but like, I agree with it. So one of you can grab this spoon. And then you come here and grab. Take your jar. Yeah, take the jar with you. <laughs> yeah. Just two of that. Yes, two of it. Inside the jar. That is okay. Get out of here. So you take, take the water and fill it up to this line. You can put it down. Fill it up. It's leaking. Mm -hmm. You should probably take a lid off there. Yeah. Yeah. Great, that is enough. So we allow it to settle down into the different compositions. Right. You can also come and grab the other soil. The same procedure. Cover it up. Shake it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's shake it. All right. Great. So whilst we wait for the soil to settle down into the various composition, I just want to give you a brief description of each soil particle. According to the presentation, we are having three different soil particles. So when you pick your guiding soil, your guiding soil is composed of three different soil particles. The first one, or you can name what the heaviest among them is? Sun. And then the second heaviest is? Silt. And the lightest of the three soil particles is? Clay. So when you pick your garden soil and you put it in a container, add a bit of water and shake it, we expect the heaviest among the three soil particles to settle first. So you have sun settling first, which will be at the bottom of the container. Then the next layer will be silt, and then we have clay, which is very light. So it will take time for the clay to settle, but it will be the uppermost layer of it. So this will take time, but when, once you do the experiment within some seconds, you will have the sun already settling down, and then you have the silt following, but it can take a very long time for the clay to settle down. Having said that, okay. I would like okay. us to go ahead and have a feel of what the different soil particles are. So we have corn flour here, which represents silt, and we are having the real clay here. We don't have sand here, but I can imagine you have all been to the beach, right? And you know what is there, that is sand, that is real sand. So I want you all to film it and tell me the characteristics of it. Super soft, have a feel of it. Great. So you can see that it is a bit soft and a bit gritty, which means that if your garden soil 
is having the largest composition of soil, it will have a low water retention ability. Its capacity to hold water when it rains will be very low. So as it rains, within some few hours or days, all the water will drain away. Right? So let's get a feel. So the properties of this is that it has low water retention. You can have a feel of this. Okay. Okay. So, like solid, like instead of solid dust. What do you feel? Like a solid, squishy, and soft moisture. So you can see it's a bit sticky, right? Yeah. And it is also smooth. So the stickiness and smooth nature of it permits us to mold it into different shapes. So when we talk about clay, this is clay, when we talk about clay, we said it is having a very high capacity to retain water. And that can lead to water logging. So you have a piece of land that is having a, that the water just stays in one particular place and it is no more. If you move into it, it becomes sticky. Except if you put your foot on it, you can get stuck, right? Because it holds a lot of water and once it gets wet, it becomes sticky. So if your garden soil is having a lot of clay, when it rains, it will retain the water for a very long period of time. Right? Okay. And for the sun in the beach, we all know the properties. It has almost zero um, ability to hold water. If you go to the bridge, you see the waves comes out with the water. As the water moves back, the sun is almost, it gets dry very quickly because it doesn't have the ability to hold the water. Right? So now let's get back to our containers and try to figure out the different compartments or layers within our experiment. If you take a close look, we can figure out three compartments right now. From the very bottom to the part where we have a very small ring, black ring around, is our sand. Because it is the heaviest, it settles down first. The black ring you are seeing is our silt. And the remaining portion is the clay, which will take a very long time to settle down. So what? So you can use this, so you can have that one. We are going to use this ruler here to determine the type of soil this is, just roughly. It will not be accurate, but just to give you an idea of how it is done. So from here, remember, from the top to the bottom represent 100, so that is 100%. So we are going to figure out the percentage of each layer. From the bottom, to where the ring is, the black ring is. You can say what percentage is that? Can you read that for me? Can you read? Terry. So let me see you, right? You can write it. That is for sun, right? So you write 30 percent. So now remember, we are dealing with a total of 100 percent. So if you take 30 percent out of 100, you are left with what? 70 percent. Okay. Let's figure out. What percentage does the black ring represent? Let's say one percent. One. But we, let's just assume that it's ten, right? It is not that much, so you can put ten for the cell, and that is forty already. So the remaining portion will be what? Sixty. Sixty. So you put sixty there. Sixty percent. So we come to our chart. Remember. The silt, the numbers runs down from 10, 20, 30, 40. That is for silt. So for you to determine which lines represent the silt, the lines, the diagonal lines that runs from the bottom to your left represent silts. For clay, the horizontal lines represent clay. And sun, which is at the bottom, the lines that run diagonal but upwards represents the lines for clay. So we have for sun rather. So sun is 30%, right? Figure out your 30% here, right? So this is that so trace it up. Let's line up. Good. Our salt is 10. Where is salt? Salt is here. So you trace it down. Our clay is what? 60. So you go horizontally. Where is the intersection? 
What color is that? Kind of yellow. And what is written there? Clay. So we can say that this soil type is mostly what? Clay, right? Which is just a rough representation of it. Maybe if we allow it more time to settle down, we will get the accurate um, soil representation. But this is how you use the chart to figure the type of your garden soil, right? So a quick recap. Um, how many soil? Particles do we have? The heaviest amount of this? The lightest amount of this? And in between we have? Thank you very much. Thank you, Maxwell. You can keep it if you want.